Glory to thee, O God, glory to thee, O heavenly King, O comfort the spirit of truth, who art in all places and fillest all things, treasure of good things and giver of life. Come into wellness and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, cleanse us from our sins, O Master, pardon our iniquities. O Holy God, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Christ is risen, brethren. Today is May 11, 2020. I am reading from the prologue of Ochred, Volume 1. Today we will be reading from St. Cyril and Methodius, equal to the Apostles, first teacher of the Slavs, the Hieromater Mosius, priest of Amphipolis, and St. Nicodemus, Archbishop of Pesh. St. Cyril and Methodius were brothers from Thessalonica, of distinguished and wealthy parents, Leo and Maria. The elder brother Methodius spent ten years as an officer among the Macedonian Slavs, and thus learned the Slavic language. After that, Methodius withdrew to Mount Olympus and dedicated himself to monastic asceticism. It was here that Cyril later joined him. When the king of the Khazars, Kagon, requested preachers of the Christian faith from Emperor Michael III, these two brothers were found and set among the Khazars by command of the emperor. Converting King Kagon to the Christian faith, they baptized him along with a great number of his chief assistants and an even greater number of the people. After some time, they returned to Constantinople, where they compiled the Slavonic alphabet, consisting of 38 letters. They then proceeded to translate ecclesiastical books from Greek into Slavonic at the request of Prince Rastislav. They traveled to Moravia, where they spread and confirmed the sacred faith and made more copies of the books, distributing them to the priest to teach the youth. At the request of the Pope, Cyril traveled to Rome. There he became ill and died on February 14, 867. Then Methodius returned to Moravia and labored to strengthen the Christian faith among the Slavs until his death. Following his death, his disciples, the five followers, with St. Clement, the bishop at their head, crossed the Danube River and traveled south into Macedonia. There from Ochrid, they continued their labor among the Slavs, which Cyril and Methodius had begun in the north. The Hieromater Mosius, priest of Amphipolis in Macedonia. Mosius was Roman by birth and a presbyter in Amphipolis, a town in Macedonia. He suffered during the reign of Diocletian. By prayer he destroyed the statue of the god Dionysius. This embittered certain pagans against him, but others he converted to the faith. He was beheaded for Christ in the year 295. St. Nicodemus, Archbishop of Pesh, Serbia, 1325. This great hierarch was a Serb by birth. He lived in asceticism on the holy mountain and was abbot of Hillander Monastery. Following the death of Sava III, he was elected archbishop of all the Serbian and coastal lands in the year 1317. Nicodemus crowned King Milutin in the year 1321. He translated the Jerusalem Typicon into Serbian. In the introduction of this book, Nicodemus writes, Almighty God, who knows our weaknesses, will give us spiritual strength, but only if we first display effort. 
He sincerely loved the ascetic life and labored to strengthen it throughout the Serbian land. He labored relentlessly to uproot the Bogomil heresy and to strengthen the Orthodox faith. He reposed in the Lord in the year 1325. His miracle working relics rest in the monastery at Pesh. Also today, Commemoration of the founding of Constantinople, 330 AD. St. Catherine of Scotland, 6th century. St. Asaph, Bishop of Lanninlu, North Wales, 600 AD. Equal to the Apostles, Rostislav, Prince of Greater Moravia, 870 AD. St. Mayul, Abbot of Cluny, 994 AD. St. Sophronius, Recluse of the Kiev Caves, 13th century. New Martyrs, Olympia, Abbas, and Euphrosine. Nun of Mytilene in 1235 A.D., Hieromartyr Joseph, Metropolitan of Astrakhan, 672 A.D., Martyr Acacius of Lower Moesia, Blessed Christesius, called Christopher, of Garehi, Georgia, 1771. New Martyrs, Dioscorus, the New and Argurus of Thessalonica, 1806 A.D., St. Theophylactus, Bishop of Stavropol and Ekaterinador, 1872. New Hieromater Alexander Petrovsky, Archbishop of Kharkov, 1940. Hymn of Praise, St. Cyril. The Muslim leaders ask Cyril, how can there be three persons in God? If God is one, from where are there three persons? Our God is one, yours is three. Cyril replied, it is not that way, it is not. But it is as the shining sun which warms at noon, which has its own light, warmth, and circle. But that is a pale picture of the divine triad, three divine persons but one in essence. Through Christ this truth is revealed. Never will mortal man comprehend this. God himself revealed this. This the church teaches. Reflection In the Saracen Encampment they asked St. Cyril, how can Christians wage war and at the same time keep Christ's commandment to pray to God for their enemies? To this, St. Cyril replied, if two commandments were written in one law and given to men for fulfilling, which man would be a better follower of the law, the one who fulfilled one commandment or the one who fulfilled both? The Saracens replied, undoubtedly, he who fulfills both commandments. St. Cyril continued, Christ our God commands us to pray to God for those who persecute us, and even to do good to them. But he also said to us, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John 15 verse 13 That is why we bear the insults that our enemies cast at us individually, and why we pray to God for them. However, as a society... We defend one another and lay down our lives so that you would not enslave our brethren, would not enslave their souls with their bodies, and would not destroy them in both body and soul. Contemplation Contemplate the action of God, the Holy Spirit, upon the apostles, how he makes the simple wise, how he makes the articulate eloquent. Amelie, on the irresistible will of God, I say to myself, I will not mention him, I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, shut up in my bones. I grow weary holding it in, I cannot endure it. Jeremiah 20 verse 9 If anyone still doubts that God spoke through the prophets, let him read this confession of the great prophet Jeremiah, and let him doubt no more. The prophet confesses that he had decided not to speak any more, in the name of the Lord. Why? Because so few paid attention to his word. If anyone heeded his word, the prophet endured reproach and derision daily. Jeremiah 28 But when he decided to remain silent, he did in fact remain silent. No, he could not. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. He was pressed by the irresistible power of the Spirit of God to speak and he had to speak. Therefore it is not the affair of the prophet whether he is going to speak or not, 
that is the affair of the all-powerful Spirit of God. The prophet is merely the chosen vessel of the all-powerful Spirit of God. All of Holy Scripture is written thus, not according to the will of man, but according to the will of God, and not according to the mind of man, but according to the mind of God. How is the word of God felt when it enters the prophet? From the Spirit of God. This the great Jeremiah explains from his personal experience. Inspiration from the all-powerful Spirit of God, under such irresistible internal pressure, like the pressure of fire shut off in the bones, holy men of God did their writing, and many of them cried out, I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it any more. Who will oppose the Spirit of God without punishment and destruction? Who will withstand Him when He wills to say or do something? O oh, my brethren, the action of God, the Holy Spirit, is irresistible. O oh, all-powerful Spirit of God, direct us irresistibly on the path of salvation. To Thee be glory and praise forever. Amen. This video was created by John and Catherine. Thank you. Thank you. God bless.